Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome to you as well. My name is Jennifer and this, this is, Jean. is Jean. And this is my channel. Um, at the end of last year, beginning of this year, I had made the decision that we were going to keep our channel separate. Jean wouldn't be on this channel. Um, I think I made that decision in haste and I let others influence my decision because that wasn't the decision that I actually wanted. While I do plan for this channel to be the majority about my life, my struggles in my personal life, um, I'm not going to limit this channel to just me. If there's a video that I feel like putting on this channel that has to do with my life, it, this channel is about my life and Jean is the other half of my life. So I'm going to just do the videos that I want to do. And if people feel the need to unfollow me because he's on my channel, that's fine. These videos are the videos that I make for myself. Um, I do hope along the way that something that we or I struggle with can give others the insight of how to get help how what not to do and your struggles with dealing with your life don't do what I do and I hope eventually to be in the place where I can say I've this is where I've been and I've come out on the other side in a better place it's been almost two years that I've had this channel and that hasn't happened yet I know people assume that a lot of people that make videos especially the top big girls on YouTube are trolling and not being honest um, and lying about why they're making videos or doing it for the money. I can honestly tell you that this is not for the money. I can't speak for anybody else. Um, although I do have to say in the last couple of months, um, I will put this out there. Amber Lynn Reed has reached out to me and we spoke. I have apologized to her for my hasty opinions about her life and about who she was as a person. I, like a lot of people, formed my judgment on what others had to say. And I didn't understand how YouTube was until I became one of those people on YouTube who have had lies told about them. People form their own opinions and they make they make up the story of your life even though it isn't really the story of your life. Um, I can't even begin to tell you the lies that have been told or the, the opinions that have been formed about me that just aren't true. Um, so I have apologized to Amber and I apologize publicly for that. I'm not saying we're best friends or we, we chat it up all the time, but I am glad that she reached out to me and I am glad that she accepted my apology. There is a lot you don't see on YouTube. There's a lot that we don't allow you to see because it's personal. And making these videos is extremely painful sometimes because you know the backlash you're gonna get. And it isn't worth any amount of money. To me, this is speaking only for me and I think I'm speaking for Jean as well. We don't do this for the money because there's no amount of money that sometimes when you read comments, you like to pretend like, oh, the comments don't hurt, but there are some comments that do hurt a lot. And as much as you like to say, oh, they don't hurt, they don't matter, there's times when they do hurt. That's why we have just not been reading comments. We have not been on YouTube. We watch other videos on YouTube that, that interest us, but we've just stayed out of the community. I've stayed out of the weight loss community. I haven't watched anybody else's videos on weight loss, and it's not because I don't support them. It's just because I don't want to put that negativity in my life when I'm struggling. And that brings me to the point of I am struggling. Um, we both are struggling at the moment. And February has not been an easy month for either of us. 
I'm not going to speak for Gene. I know I've been speaking. I haven't let him say anything yet, but um, the last video I made, I talked about my back injury, and that has been three weeks actually tomorrow that I've been struggling with my back injury. It's a lot of pain. Yes, a lot of pain. She's been in a lot of pain. And it's finally gotten to a point where it's become tolerable now, and I can sit up and I can, I am starting to be able to take care of myself, semi take care of myself again. Um, I didn't realize how much I took my mobility for granted when people would say, get up out of that chair and walk, do what you can. You don't realize, I didn't realize, I took it for granted. It was just easy and I was lazy and you don't realize until you're in physical pain and you can't get up and walk and I had to lay in bed. You don't realize how much you take that for granted being able to move when you can, when I could have. Um, I've made that a priority that as my back is getting better to stop relying on this chair and to get my butt moving because I am able to move. Um, I don't want to be in a position where I have to be bed bound for the rest of my life because that would just, these past three weeks have been hard on me emotionally because it's been, made me depressed. Um, not being able to get out of bed and do. Just missing out on life. Yeah. Not doing anything. And that puts into perspective missing out on a whole lot of other things because I'm reliant on the chair and I don't have to be if I just pushed myself to work harder to get out of the chair. Um, I'm just going to say a couple more things and then I'll let you talk. No, you're fine. Yeah. Um, there was a couple things like from my last video when I said about not doing a weigh-in because my back was hurting. I didn't, I know it sounded like I was using that as an excuse to not do a weigh-in, but that we all know that that's not an excuse not to do a weigh-in. I mean, I could stand up and stand on a scale had nothing to do with my back it's just I was off track I'm off track and I don't want to see the scale and I wasn't trying to use it as an excuse although I do understand it sounded like it so maybe subconsciously I was trying to use it as an excuse um, but I have been off track and it's been kind of bad not like horribly bad but not good because when I'm laying in bed that I feel depressed and I just want to eat. And people were try coming down in the comments about Jean bringing me the food. I've had this problem long before I met Jean. I'm 44, I've been a compulsive overeater pretty much my whole life, definitely my entire adult life. And Jean was never a part of that. And I have access to ordering food online. I have access to DoorDash. I have access to all those things that people can bring me food that I don't need Gene to bring me food. So it has nothing to do with him. Um, I'm a little guilty of it, no, no. But she controls me. Which is the kind of joke of the thumbnail. It was just a joke. Um, but there is, in all honesty, in addiction, there is manipulation and control and like anybody who ha is an addict or has lived with an addict, you know that there is a part of you that makes the other person kind of drives them crazy until you just, they just give you what you want just to shut you up. Because me and my mom would actually have that conversation as well because I would go on and on and on because I didn't have what I wanted, which was my food. And my mom would say she would just give it to me to shut me up. And that's not healthy. I, we completely understand that. We have both taken steps to fix what is wrong in our relationship, and not in our, just our relationship, in our lives, uh, separately. Um, we're not seeking the advice of viewers, although I understand a lot of you guys have excellent ideas, excellent um, opinions, and very valid opinions but we ha we are seeking treatment for what is wrong in our lives. Um, we're not right at a place where we wanted to talk about the treatment that we're, or you know, what we're, we've sought out, but we are addressing the issues 
Um, that's part of why being away from YouTube. Kind of have to. You have to draw back and fix what's wrong instead of putting it all out there. And then... No, otherwise it uh, keeps on going. Once you get back on track, you can share how you've been on track and what's been going on. But until you're actually back on track and in a solid state, it's just better to keep that private, I feel, we feel. Yeah, yeah. Um, At some level, I mean, yeah, you don't... Um, so vex it you can hex go. it yeah yeah I, you know i've tripped up myself uh went through full-blown relapse i mean i went you know made a video about me going through a mental emotional relapse first uh it's where i began to fall off the beam so to speak my balance in life um got more unthankful um more lazy lethargic, low energy, um, and then anxiety, boredom creeps in, and then a full-blown, you know, physical relapse uh, where I started drinking again. And um, it was always, it's always nerve-wracking to take that, that first drink again because I cleared over three months. It was three months and a week or three months, two weeks. I think three months and a week. I don't know. And, uh, but then I went to go uh, get some whiskey. And then I couldn't really, um, I didn't, anyway, so then after that I continued on and I started hiding it, trying to hide it from Jennifer and that's where I just, I, I put it all back in, put it all back there in the closet and no longer it's in the closet and so, hold on. Just leave it alone. So, uh, you know, getting back on track, um, it's never easy. Uh, so, I don't know what to say because I am not on track. Neither am I. So, as I'm cleaning up out the little closet, my little hiding spot, uh, it's never easy getting back on track. However, uh, cleaning out is part in transparency. It's all part of the um, getting back on track. Uh, being honest with myself and others. And, um, and so, yeah. Have AA lined up. Um, you know, I have all my locations where I'm to go. Um, and I have gone to a meeting, um, and I am looking for a sponsor. Uh, however, um, right now I'm just in a place where I'm, I'm going to need, you know, some extra assistance because it's in my body, it's in my mind, um, and that's kind of the only answer. I feel like I'm just... No, you're not. You're talking from your heart. again I don't know really what to fucking say it's just hard for when you struggle no no don't I don't want you talking for me I'm I, not I help talking through this like what the okay. fuck do I talk about how you're feeling how am I feeling I feel like shit <laughs> and we look like shit but Hold on. Um, I, th I thought I had a word or something. So, uh, you know, as of right now, I'm just dealing with uh, the anxiety, the boredom, the depression that comes with it. I'm not really dealing so much with depression, but that's maybe a little triggered. Mainly just anxiety and boredom. <coughs> and now she has a cold. I had a cold last week. Now she has a cold this week. So, I thought thank that was, you for sharing. It was kind of a late reaction. Thought you would have came down with it when when I was, I was already sick. When I was struggling with my back, uh, to, just to go back a little bit too. When I was talking about having a fever that first weekend. 
Um, that had nothing to do with my back, hurting my back. That was two separate, it just happened to be at the same time. I was dealing, it was just a virus. I had 104 temperature and then I was having other flu virusy like symptoms. Um, you know. It's not the coronavirus. No, it's definitely that, that, not the that coronavirus. Has been verified. That has been verified. <laughs> Um, but that quickly, you know, that only lasted a couple of days, the fever, the body aches, the other symptoms. Hadn't been verified by a doctor, but verified by, uh, symptoms gone away. So. Right. And then my, of course, my back has just been hurting. It, the two are not related. Yeah, it's not the coronavirus. <laughs> and then while I was dealing with my back hurting the worst, that's when he got a cold. Which was not the coronavirus. Which is not the coronavirus either. Um, and then, as he got better, he's better now. I mean, he's still sniffling a little bit. But then, now I've come down with a cold and I'm sneezing and coughing. And I feel like I'm going to sneeze now that I'm talking about it. We need to wipe everything down with Clorox wipes. Look in the bright light. <laughs> We've been having a lot of those sneezes where they come on and then they're fleeting. Yeah, and That's they don't want to... the most annoying. It doesn't want to follow through and it burns and it hurts and... But anyways... February the, has not been a good month for no, us. No, no, it hasn't. The whole thing is, you know, I should have stayed away from the first drink, of course. Uh, like they say, it, it's never... It will never be easier to stay clean. Except for today kind of thing. Forgot how my sponsor put it, but so yeah, back at kind of like ground zero, it's like, well, damn, uh, yeah, it's like it's tough again. It just sucks. It's like life became really mundane and boring all of a sudden again. Right. With, without it. That's but, the way I feel with food. Like goals, you know, just trying to get back with on with goals and vision in the future, and that is what is motivating and somewhat exciting, I guess. I, I don't really have much contentment in life. That's the problem. Not very content. Even if I had all those things that I visualize in the future, I would still wouldn't be content. I'd still be left being a uh, a bored alcoholic. So where's my contentment found? You know. You have to find that within. It's nobody can provide that for you. It's not like something that's lacking in our relationship. It's not something that's lacking in friendships. It's it's something within ourselves. Yeah, it's an empty hole. Yeah. Yay. And that's the same way. Even though food addiction is different from alcohol, um, it's the same because it's an addiction. It, you use it to fill a void and fill what you're lacking. And I feel the same way. Are you going to move the camera while I'm talking? Right there. Um, when, you're, when you don't have that fix, when you don't have the food that you want, when you're trying to get back on track, life seems hopeless and boring and what's the point of even living because i can't have good food and it's part of the disease talking food but it does is feel that way. food makes me feel all kinds of emotions it makes me feel happy i feel like everything is possible but that's the weird part of addiction is because that thing that you're addicted to the food is killing me because it, i can't be happy while i'm using the food but it makes me think that I am so happy. But then when you stop and you're, when you see reality, when you come out of that fog, you see that that food is killing you and is killing all chances of any kind of actual happiness that you have in your life because the food has got me to the point where I'm not able to be mobile. I'm, you know, my health is staggering because of it. it just all sorts of things, just same way with alcohol. The alcohol keeps you down and not able to it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the high is deceiving because it does make you feel like that you're like excited for life, or uh, you know, like the goals and the whatever you have accomplished is like that much more exciting, and you feel like you can accomplish more. You start to feel kind of like a Superman. Right, but then that's what's screwing you. There's no payoff. No. You have all these goals, and you have all these things written on paper. But all you have are empty food wrappers to show for it because there you don't go anywhere. You just or trash eating. to clean up, and it's just Literally. all a bunch of talk. That um, ain't right. Yeah. So 
So that's, we just, I've just made a video to, the reason I made the video is because I haven't been making videos because first of all, we're trying to struggle through and you can't do that on YouTube when you're struggling. You need to get off of YouTube and fix what's wrong. Um, second of all, there's really no point of making videos saying I'm doing this and that and I'm not. Um, I did the other night, we made keto chocolate chip cookies, which was good. Those are actually impressive. Um, they were a little crumbly. I like stevia, good stuff. And they were a little crumbly, but the taste of them were really good. And we do look forward to getting back on track because we were having a really good time making our healthy recipes. And Jane has been feeling the, reaping the spoils of eating unhealthy. Um, he's gained a little bit of weight and... Old Jack gaining weight. Um, that's something that we talked about too because he said that... About five pounds. And, but to him, because he's been slender all of his life, um, five pounds to somebody who is used to their body type for 40 years, almost 40 years, and then starts to gain weight, it does feel uncomfortable. And we had that discussion because he said he looked in the mirror the other day and he said he was just, I don't, I don't think you used the word disgusted. I think you just said you didn't like the way you were looking and your, your body was looking because you were feeling. Yeah. feeling. Just and then it kind of, bulky. it kind of offended me at Jiggly. first. It kind of offended me at first because I was like, well, look at me. But I realized that he wasn't talking about me. He was just talking about how he feels, which I understand. I mean, that was just, you know what I mean? That was... I don't think anybody really enjoys having fat on their on their body, I would think. No. Well, I think there are probably... I mean, I grew are. up with an overweight family. I never really heard them say, oh, this is so comfortable. Well, but there are people that do feel that way. Uh, okay, well, I never met anybody. Well, and that's another thing... It's not a comfortable feeling to jiggle. <laughs> It's just not, or when you bend over, there's a roll right there. It starts to get in the way. Yeah, you can't breathe when you try to tie your shoes. Uh, yeah, and you feel full. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this is another thing I didn't even talk about. We were going to talk about this, but there are so many people saying that you're a feeder. I've actually had, which was really disappointing to me, um, somebody who has subscribed to me for quite some time. There is actually someone who has subscribed to me for quite some time, and... Um, they made a video about me, which is fine. I, you know, people make videos about people all the time, and that's not the point. It's just this person I... We weren't actually friends' friends, but I considered him kind of a friend, and I thought we were on good terms. But then in the video, he alluded to the fact that he thought Gene was a feeder and a bad influence. That's fair enough, me. whatever, you know. But the thing is, it breaks my heart to see Jennifer in the condition that she's in. It's not healthy. I don't enjoy my girl being 500 pounds uh, and then gaining. I, I don't find joy in that. No. And there's no real future in that as far as going places and enjoying life and being healthy. I mean, we're not getting any younger. I don't, I don't want to see her continue to get bigger and bigger until she's bedridden. What the hell is that? You know, so no, I'm not a feeder. Actually, I never even heard of a feeder till Jennifer told me what a feeder was. So no, I don't feed my girl and then go off and pleasure myself. That's not quite who I am. <laughs> That's a little weird, but um, well, we can't say it's, it's weird. Everybody has their own fetish. Yeah, I mean you can't. It's just strange. I mean, in my opinion, that's that's. Well, it. I, I, don't, no, I don't get off on that. I don't. Um, what What is exciting to me is is for you to lose weight and for me to stay sober and for us to actually have a future together that is right. healthy. So. Yeah. All right, so to sum it up, and I'll show you what I've got here. We have been doing a lot of editing. We decide on what we're, what we're going to include and what we're not going to include. But um, to sum it up, February has been a rough month for us, both of us together. Um, the one thing that is not rough is we are committed to each other for the long run because I can't see my life without him. He's my best friend and he is worth, no matter how much we've struggled or how much we fight, 
because we do fight. We have our fights. But at the end of the day, the good part is I know he's my best friend. And I've never felt more comfortable with anyone in my life than I am with him. And I am not afraid to be honest with him about how I feel or all my things that I'm ashamed of. I'm not afraid to tell him. And I know he feels the same way. <sighs> He gets I cannot honestly say that she is not afraid to tell me what she thinks. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow. Firmly agree. Anyhow, the whole point is, even though February has been rough for us, there have been, we've have had a lot of good times. Because you have to see the good. You can't just dwell on the bad. And we had a very nice Valentine's Day. He it's made really it very nice. special. He, when I woke up, there was roses on my table beside my bed, my my sick bed that I haven't been able to get out of. Put, put little petals on the floor, like little hearts. Yeah, little hearts, a trail of hearts, like from the bathroom to the kitchen to the, out the front door. And I got this big old lovey, stuffy... And He's got, cute. He is very cute and snuggly. And I got a sweet note. And this weekend is our fourth anniversary. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be celebrating that. Thankfully, I feel better. And we're going to do some special things. Maybe we'll take some pictures or videos or whatever. But... Go out and see the town. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyhow, she needs to get her back uh, straightened back out. That's the main thing. And it is feeling Pray. better. It is feeling a lot keep, better. Keep her in her, your prayers because the back has been an issue. Keep us both in your prayers. Debilitating. Yeah. And that's another thing that we've... I keep saying there's another thing, another thing. Um, we've been seeking the guidance of God and reading the Bible together and God's Word and we both feel that that is the main, what our lives are all about. A source of strength. It is the answer to everything. God is the answer to everything. Um, there's someone in our lives that is very wise in the way of God. I mean, we both are, you know, in touch with our spiritual side and with God. And, but someone who has been helping us a lot seek the word of God and I appreciate that person so much. She's wonderful. Very wonderful. So we'll stop rambling. I'll stop rambling. I keep saying, well, there's one more thing I can say. There's one more thing. And Jane's like, let's just get this over with. I'm ready to be done with this. Um, because he's not the kind yeah, of... I'm having a ball. Having a ball being vulnerable. He's not the kind of spill your guts that I am because I, I'm, I'm an oversharer and he can tend to be an undersharer publicly. Not to each other, but publicly. Sometimes I share way too much with people and sometimes he doesn't share enough. And he, sometimes he'll look at me like when we're out and he's like, why did you just say that? And I'm like, why didn't you just say that? So we have to come to like a, a common meeting place, pull back push forward a little bit, mm -hmm. learn what is too much and not enough. That's another thing of YouTube is learning what is too much and not enough, and I'm rambling again. And we're just going to end it here. <laughs> so, all this to say, it's just it's a check-in video. We do plan on, well, I plan on making more videos. I think, are you going to make more videos on your yes, channel? Yes, ma'am, I'm going to make more videos. And. As soon as I'm feeling one hundred percent. about whatever the heck I'm going through, you know, just you guys find that of interest. And then peeps over there on that end. Yeah. We'll be making more videos on our couple channel. Yeah. Well, what do we have? One. We have one. Jelly bean. The boozle, jelly bean. Frazzle, yes, and a lot of people were like, "Oh drizzle, my God, snizzle. he's giving her jelly beans." And it was before the first of the year. <laughs> He's feeding me her. jelly beans. It was before the first of the year. It was. It's a game. And you definitely uh, do not sit yeah. down and binge on those jelly beans because no, of the oh, chances of getting good a... Good God. That was the worst taste of my life ever. 
Terrible. I was luckily I didn't get any of the bad bad ones. I'm lucky. Yeah. Although we still have that thing in jelly you beans. You were lucky. It kind of makes me a little suspicious. <laughs> All right, we're gonna end it. It's getting time to play cards in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's looking like about we're nearing 45 minutes on this. Yeah. We have to well, cut we'll it edit in like it half. Edit it down. All right, peeps. Thank you for bearing with us. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your support, too. We yes. appreciate it. And we will, I will see you soon. He will see you soon. You might see him back on my channel soon. You might not. I don't know. I'll be making a video or three here upcoming soon. Ooh. All right. We will see you soon. And I hope you guys are having a good February. Spring is right around the corner. We look Indeed. forward to spring. Oh, we can also say that we are officially apartment hunting. No, it's not official. No, we're not officially apartment hunting. Don't count your chickens before they hatch. Right? My ears feel like they want to pop. All right, we're out of here. See you guys soon. Love all. Say lovey. Remember, be the be love. Light. No, be the, be love, the love, be the light, and do good things. That's what she said. Bye, everyone. Bye.